There he is. Okay. Wow. Um, as as you uh, heard in the uh, choir piece, we're looking at uh, Philippians 4, 8, and 9. Yeah. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is uh, pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and anything worthy of praise, let your mind dwell on these things. Mm -hmm. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I wanted to ask the question this week of myself, and I, I did over the last uh, couple of days, uh, really thought about this. What do I think about? Encourage you to think about what you think about. Uh, you know, if if I jump in, uh, and you you might not want to know this about my mind, but um, <laughs> I I really do think about the Bible a lot. Okay, and and it's very important for me to read it to. Uh, you know, rewrite it uh, in, in my own words to understand it, to be able to pass it on to other people. Uh, but but there, there's, there's this sense in which, am I reading because I think I earn points with God by spending time reading? Or am I reading to absorb the truth of God? What do I think about? When I'm reading, uh, you know, in my prayer list, when I'm praying for people and I've got this big old long list and for some reason I can remember it all in my mind and go through it in order and and lots of people are included on that list. Um, can it be that at some point I start asking for uh, evil wish list, you know, uh, that, that God would... Uh, just destroy that person because I don't like them and what they did to somebody else or, you know, that sort of thing. Does, does, does my prayer at some times become other than pure and lovely and wonderful? And yet I really need to remember that when I'm asking for good things for other people, um, they can be good, but show up in some kind of a negative way and I still need to keep in mind in the midst of all my prayer I'm asking for God's will to be done because I believe deep in my heart that God's will is better than any man's will and so we have to you know even look at the world around us and the, the troubles that we're going through and wonder is there good that comes out of what we call evil in this world and is there some sense in which God is at work even in the midst of all of that I'm a numbers person I'm a mathemat mathematician okay that's that was my degree in uh, uh, in college uh, I think about numbers I think about taxes I think about bills I think about accounting I think about strategies for finances and investments and things of that sort. But when all of a sudden I start thinking, well, wait a minute, if I could just make $5 a day on my investments and that would be $25 or yeah, $25 a week, which would be $100 a month, which would be a thousand twelve hundred dollars a year uh, well gee what happens if I could make a hundred dollars and so all of a sudden my mind starts going on those kinds of numbers and then it becomes greed mm -hmm. and am I thinking pure lovely wonderful thoughts of God or am I getting caught up in the numbers of this world when I know that my provision comes from God alone and not my ability to invest well and make more money. 
I just have to keep coming back to that. <coughs> Driving down the road yesterday, um, I, I realized that a lot of times when I drive, I'm, I'm counting cars. Now you, you, you don't have to, you don't have to understand this, but <laughs> I, I was a little boy, uh, probably about uh, AJ's age, um, somewhere in there, and my mother got me a cowboy costume, complete with the guns and the holsters. Okay, and I was out walking up and down the street in front of our house when some friends came by to visit and I, I was sort of waiting for them to come and they came up to me and they said uh, well young man what are you doing and I said I'm guarding cars <laughs> and I had my guns right there well, I count cars when I'm driving down the road uh, I, I count Volkswagens <laughs> I count Priuses. I, you know, there there was a period of time I can remember when I would drive over when when I had my first Prius, I would drive over 17 on my way to San Martin, and there were 10, maybe 15 Priuses that I counted as I drove over 17, and now there's about 60 or 70 of them, and of course I could start counting Teslas if I wanted to because they're <laughs> prominent and so forth and so on. But anyway, it, uh, it you know. That, that's what goes through my mind. I count miles. I'm going, oh, well, how far have I been? And how much further do I have? And, and all of those kinds of things. You know, all these uh, GPS apps on, on the, the phone don't, or on the, the maps in the car don't do me any good at all because I just go, well, I know I've got 145 miles left to go because that's, uh, that's where I am. I've been this far. My mind thinks about that kind of stuff. Uh, it drives me crazy. <laughs> Might drive you crazy if you sat there and listened to my mind. You know? uh, but I also question the wisdom of other drivers. <clears throat> that's not a good thing. That, that's, that, that's not the kind of things I should be thinking about. I grumble at the road conditions and the counties and the, uh, the state not being able to, you know, well, I won't go into that because that'll get us all on, on that. Um, I become anxious about getting someplace at a particular time. Mm -hmm. That's not good and pure and lovely and excellent things to think about. How do I switch my mind back over to the good and the lovely? How can I start praying for people while I'm driving? How can I start thinking about the, the beauty of the world around me without being too distracted from the road and, and those sorts of things? There are times that I, um, I play a lot of golf. I love to play golf. Um, I've been playing golf since I was seven years yeah. old. My mom and dad, uh, dad was a base commander of the Air Force in Puerto Rico, and he took my brother, two years older than I, and I out to the golf course and uh, basically just dropped us off because all of the people on the base knew who he was. Therefore, they knew who we were, and if we did anything, he would hear about it. And so we had the freedom uh, to, to be on the golf course uh, for hours and hours and hours and, uh, and not have any adult supervision, even though we were supervised by hundreds of adults around us. Um, so that, but I'm still trying to figure out how to play the game. And so I strategize, is this good? Is that bad? Should I do this? What should I do? And, and sometimes I get into it because I want everybody to think I'm a good golfer. That's not good and lovely and pure and excellent and wonderful. How do we learn to think on the right kinds of things? kinds of things which will be beneficial to our mental health, that will be beneficial to our good actions for other people. I mean, I'm a firm believer in the fact, and this, this may not be everybody's belief, but I'm a firm believer in the fact that if I can change the way I think, I will change the way I do. And the more I change the way I do, <laughs> the better I'm going to be for other people if what I'm thinking are the good things of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Kinds of things to think about. Truth is high on that list. 
doesn't do any good to waste your time thinking about lies mm-hmm. or speculations. Mm-hmm. You know, it's interesting in Second Corinthians uh, ooh, chapter 10, I think it is, where it talks about how um, speculations are the lofty thoughts raised up against the knowledge of God. <laughs> it's a fascinating terminology, okay? Uh, I mean, there's some good speculation when uh, when we're sitting there saying, okay, it's time to uh, make a change in a job or make a change in a house or make a change in a location. It's helpful to go through what are all the possibilities and what's the best one and what isn't. But when we're in the midst of anxiety and we're worrying about something, it does us no good at all to think about, speculate about what are all the things that could happen. <clears throat> Because the more we do that, we waste our energy on the speculation rather than turning to God in prayer and asking him to give us peace as we uh, wait for the future to unfold before us. If we know something's not true, we need to figure out how to just remove it from our mind. And the easiest way to do that I think that's one of the things that was learned in uh, raising kids at at one point is that uh, my old school family was to punish the kids and then all of a sudden somewhere along the line there was the learn to distract the kids and so if I want to follow that terminology or that process if I'm going to distract then I need to say, wait a minute, I shouldn't be thinking about that. Let me go back to a memorized passage of scripture or let me start singing a, a hymn. Uh, uh, Phyllis and I were talking about earlier this morning how, how wonderful it is to have all these hymns in floating around in your head so that you can just uh, start singing and, and it changes your thinking away from the things of the world that might be lies into the uh, the future that God has for us. Mm-hmm. I believe that God wants only what is best for us. I'm a firm believer in that, and I know some people uh, won't necessarily agree with my theology on this, and so that that's okay with me. Um, I'm not sure. I think we have some options in Scripture on this one, but but I really believe that anything and everything that happens to me in my life is somehow going to be a part of God's plan and God's best. And therefore, if I look at it that way, uh, as my wife and I often say, is things that don't go the way we have it planned, oh, this is an adventure. God's leading us down a path that we didn't expect what's what's going to come next now i know there are plenty of people who say well wait a minute that's not a really good way to look at it but but that's the way it's comfortable for me uh, for uh, no other reason other than to turn my way f- my my mind away from the the pain and the suffering and the tra- the tragedy that's before me back to God and say, I put my trust in you in the midst of this situation. You know, it's not a question of whether God planned that to be in my life or whether God (laughs) is going to do something good about it. For me, it's the practical picture of how do I change my mind? How do I change my thinking? And that means that everything that comes my way, I have to turn my thinking back to what is uh, what, what is God doing in my life? And God, how can you improve uh, my thinking and improve my life? Let me trust in you. I also believe that everything we think and therefore everything we confess could possibly become true in our future. Okay, Uh, and if we confess bad often enough, it will come our way. Now, it might not come our way in exactly the same way we confess it, but sooner or later, the more we think about bad things coming and the more we confess bad things happening, the more bad is going to happen to our life. 
we reap what we sow. The more we dwell on the lovely and the pure things in this life and surround ourselves with the opportunities to experience these lovely and pure things, the more our mind thinks of how we might make our actions better for others. And that's the goal, at least to me, to become more and more Mm -hmm. like Jesus in the way I think and speak and act so that people around me are touched by his love and are blessed by him as I have been blessed. God is the one who's worthy of all our praise. He's the one who is excellent above all else. Anything that he creates and does fits into this category of being worthy of praise and lovely and wonderful and things to think about. So have at it. Think about the beauty of the creation around you. Look at the sunrises and sunsets. And and, uh, Linda and I always look at it and go, wow, Jesus painted something great for us today. Mm. You know, it's his handiwork. It's not ours. He does something different, new and fresh every morning. Mm. What wonders come to our minds when we see the creation of God, meditate, Paul, uh, David says in Psalm 1, meditate on the things of God. Mm-hmm. Fill our minds with this stuff is what Paul says. When we hear others talk about the events of life or other people, I mean, the gossip that's there, we've got to ask ourselves, does that fit into the context of good? And if not, we've got to walk away from it and not not carry that story on to somebody else. Mm. Shouldn't be listening to what they have to say. If a teacher comes into our midst and starts teaching something that that isn't true, or at least it doesn't seem to be true, we need to we need to learn to say, I, no, I need to focus on truth. We want the things of God to be a regular part of our thinking. That makes all of our words a regular part of the things of God. Jesus said, listen to me closely. All of the idle words you speak will be recounted at the day of judgment. Mm. Wow. You could be there a long time just for me, standing, listening to all that stuff. They'll either justify us or condemn us in the day of judgment. So choose to think right. Let the Spirit of God change your thinking and your actions. The true blessing from right thinking... The more we think of the goodness and the right, the more we think of God, the more he expresses his closeness to us and we feel him with us and we feel the peace that he brings to us. And that's really what we want our minds to dwell on, is sitting in his presence and letting his goodness, his mercy pour out upon us. And everything we need will be ours so that we can carry out the work that he has for us to do. If it's true or noble or right, think about it. If it's pure, lovely, or admirable, think about it. Whatever you deem to be praiseworthy and perfect, think about these things Put it into practice, all of these things you have learned from the teachings of Jesus. And God will be with you and will inhabit, will pour out upon you his peace. One of the greatest things to think about 